What's up guys? It's finally here. We are now in book two of Japanese from Zero. This is lesson one. If you have been following along with my lessons, then you'll know that this time we're going to do things a little bit differently. Instead of using the vocabulary that is in the book, and in this book he teaches katakana, we have already done katakana and we're going to start doing kanji. And all of the vocabulary words that we're going to use, they're going to come from the JLPT instead. So we're going to use the grammar from this, but everything else is going to come from the JLPT. We're going to kind of combine the two. I do recommend that you watch this in conjunction with the JLPT vocabulary course. You don't have to. You can probably pick one or the other. You can watch either the JLPT course or you can watch this one, but it's going to help you a lot more if you switch back and forth. So you're going to watch one JLPT course and then one of the lessons from this book. And that's going to kind of help you remember your vocabulary, give you a chance to practice it, and get you familiar with the kanji. As always, I do recommend that you buy the book. You don't have to, you can get by without it, but it's going to help you a lot. There are a lot of practice questions. You'll learn a lot more vocabulary words. You can write in it so you can go through and highlight different things. You can improve your handwriting and all kinds of stuff. So I do recommend you buy this book. It's very cheap. It's about $30 very affordable for a textbook and it's definitely worth it i think i don't know if he still does it but i think i think you can get a pdf version which is cheaper if you would rather have a digital download i don't know if he still does that i like the physical copies because i can write in them and i i don't know it's just nicer in my opinion but you don't need to get the physical copy if assuming i don't know maybe i should check <laughs> i don't know if he still has the pdf option available but he used to i have korean from zero in pdf form um i wanted to try it out before i bought a physical copy so uh he used to he used to do a pdf version that was cheaper so you could maybe try that instead but anyway that is enough chit chat let's get into the lesson we are going to learn a new verb type today we are going to practice with the edu edu verbs if you need a review on the four different verb types and how to use regular verbs, you can find that in lesson 20 of the beginner course. I will link that video here if I'm able to, if you want to go back and re-watch it again. But they are pretty easy. All you have to do is take the U form of the verb and change it to the E form of that verb before adding your ending, right? So if it ends with U, you'll change it to E. If it ends with ku, you'll change it to ki, gu, gi, su, shi, so on and so forth. Now, let's quickly review the four verb endings that you've learned so far. Mas is used for both the present tense and the future tense. So this man is going to eat some bread, right? That's going to be future tense. You can also use it for present tense. It's both. Then we have mashta. Mashta, that one's past tense. The baby has already eaten all of its food. Masen, this one is present and also future negative. Present negative, he doesn't eat the pepper. Future negative, he isn't going to eat the pepper. And then finally, we have masen deshta, which is the past negative. This little boy did not eat his cabbage, right? It's past tense and it's negative and because he did not eat it it grew into this big mutant cabbage and now they are best friends <laughs> that is my logic for putting this picture here he didn't eat the cabbage now it's his friend so to conjugate a regular verb remember that you take the oo and you change it to an e then you can add your verb ending iku becomes iki mas Right, I go. Now let's talk about iru edu verbs. Conjugating iru edu verbs is really easy. You don't have to do anything at all. All you have to do is take off the ru. The ru falls off, and then you can add your verb ending. So, how do you know if it's an iru edu verb? An iru edu verb is just a verb that rhymes with iru or edu. 
Abiru is an iru verb. Deru rhymes with eru. It's an eru verb. So the first one is abiru. Abiru, which means to bathe. All I have to do to change it into the present tense is take the root away and add my verb ending. Abimas, abimas. Then we have deru, deru, which means to leave or to exit. Demas, demas, drop the ru, add mas. Easy peasy. And just because some people get a little bit confused on this one because it is an iru. I mean, it is the iru. <laughs> iru eru verbs. It is the iru verb. But the same thing applies. Just drop the ru, it becomes imas. Iru, imas. Now, unfortunately, there are exceptions to every rule. So there are some iru eru exception verbs. These are verbs that sound like they would be iru eru verbs, but actually they're just regular verbs. So the good thing is, although they are exceptions, they're still not difficult. They're not difficult in the way that English irregular verbs are difficult. Because although they look like iru eru verbs, they're just conjugated like regular ones. That's the only difference. And there's only about 30 to 40 of them. I'm going to highball it. I, I would much rather highball it than lowball it. So I'm going to say about 40-ish of them, uh, which is not that bad. And they're not difficult. You just have to remember that these particular verbs actually conjugate like a regular verb and not like an iru eru verb. I do have some examples here. They are all in five verbs. First up, we have hashiru, which rhymes with iru, but it conjugates like a regular verb. So we're going to change that ru to a ri, and it becomes hashiri mas. Hashiri mas. I run. He runs. Then we have hairu, which means to enter. Hairu also rhymes with iru, but it conjugates like a regular verb. Change the ru to ri. Hairimas. Hairimas. I enter. Shiru means to know, to know something. Change the ru to ri. Shirimas. Shirimas. So although they look, they sound like they should be iru eru verbs, they are in fact exceptions, which just means that they are regular. Now, let's talk about the verb iru, which is the to be verb for living animate objects. Emphasis there on animate, because although plants are living, they are not animate. They do not move. So you don't use iru with plants. It is for things that can move and they are alive. The verb iru can also mean to have. Like, I have a cat. I have a sister. You might be a little bit confused because we've already learned a to-be verb. It was des. They are a little bit different. Des is the true to-be verb. It really is, is, am, are, was, were. That's what des is. Edu is more about existence. Like, it, you're saying something exists in this space, right? Whenever you use iru to mean I have, you're, main, you're saying I have something, something exists in my possession. If I want to use iru instead of des, I have to say neko ga iru, neko ga iru. I can say soko wa neko ga iru. There, in that spot, there is a cat. A cat exists. If we were to take these sentences literally, this one is saying cat, it is. Or cat, they are. This one is more like cat exists, right? In this space exists a cat. In this location currently, it is existing. It's a little tricky to think about because in English we just kind of lump it all into one to be verb. They separate their to be verbs into two different types. It's kind of like saying there is a cat as opposed to saying it is a cat. 
you're putting a little bit more emphasis on the fact that a cat is existing in a space. Let's read some practice sentences using the vocabulary from the first JLPT lesson. So take a minute, try to read it yourself, figure out what it means. Then I will read it and explain it out loud. Ready? Okaa-san wa doko ni imasu ka? Okaa-san. That is our topic. All right, that's where our spotlight is. What does it mean? Okaa-san. Look at the kanji. That might help you. What does the kanji remind you of? Okaa-san means mother. Doko ni? Doko ni? Do you remember doko? From the beginner course, doko is where? Doko ni imasu ka? Remember that this is the to be verb for living things, something exists. So again, if I were to translate this exactly literally, where does your mother exist? <laughs> where currently is your mother existing? Right, which is weird, we wouldn't say that. We would just say where is? your mom. Where is your mother? For this is the respectful version. So where is your mother? Where is she? That's what this means. That's how we would translate it. It means where does your mother exist currently? <laughs> but we're not going to say that. That doesn't make sense in English. So we're going to translate it as is. Where is your mom? How about this one? I'm going to help you out a little bit because this is a word I believe it was in your homework, but for those of you who didn't look at the homework, this is yoin, yoin, which means hospital. So take a minute, pause, try to read the sentence, knowing that this word means hospital. What does the sentence mean? Yoin ni ojisan ga imashita. Yoin ni in the hospital. Ojisan ga. Mm, ojisan, ojisan. It's got the long I. This is grandfather. And it's past tense. Imashita. My grandfather was in the hospital. He's no longer in the hospital. He was there. How about this one? Ie ni wa chichi ga imasen. We haven't really talked about combination particles yet. We know that ni means in or on or at, whatever preposition we need in English. And wa is the topic marker, so it's shining a spotlight on it. Remember also in the lesson where we talked about wa and ga, that wa often implies contrast, right? It's going to shine a spotlight on whatever our topic is. So in this case, because it is implying a contrast, when you use ni wa like this, you're kind of putting emphasis on it. You're saying ie ni wa in the house. As for inside the house, I know my father is not there. Chichi ga imasen. I know, I know that dad, that my dad, he's not in the house, but I don't know where he is. As opposed, right, it's implying contrast, as opposed to all other things. I don't know about other places, but I know that he's not in the house, right? So that's what the wa here does. We don't actually need the wa. We could say ie ni kichi ga imasen. We don't need the wa. But if we add the wa, we're saying, as for the house, I know that my father's not in there. My father's definitely not in the house, but I don't know where he is. I don't know about these other things, but as for this thing, that is my topic. I know about that thing. That's what the wa is doing here. So, ie ni wa. Chichi ga imasen. My father is not in the house. Okay, almost done. What do you think? Tashi wa imoto ga imasen. Remember that iru also means to have. Right? I have a cat. I have a dog. I have a sister, a little sister. I, as for me, 妹, little sister, I don't have. 
I don't have a little sister. Now I have some questions for you to wrap up the vocabulary section. This one says, Kanojo no okasan desu ka? Kanojo no okasan desu ka? Hmm. Is this her mom? Is it her mom? Take a moment and try to answer it yourself. Using everything that you've learned in the beginner course and what you know now, try to answer this question. What do you think? Pause if you need to. Ie. Kanojo no otousan desu. Ie no. Kanojo no her otousan desu. It's her father. This is her father. Okay, one more. Kanojo no onisan desu ka? Kanojo no onisan desu ka? What do you think? Onisan. Look at the kanji. That might help a little bit. I'll give you a hint. This is a brother, but is it an older brother or a younger brother? What do you think? It's an older brother. So is this her older brother? No. So what can we say? Ie. Kanojo no ototo desu. Kanojo no ototo desu. This is her little brother. I lied. There's one more page of vocabulary practice. <laughs> so we have a little sample conversation here. Read it. Read the whole thing. See if you can understand what they're talking about. Pause. Read it. Are you good? Okay. Kyoshitsu ni dare ga imasu ka? Kyoshitsu means classroom. So kyoshitsu ni dare ga imasu ka? Ane ga imasu. What is ane? Ane is humble for older sister. My older sister is in the classroom, right? Who is in the classroom? My older sister is. Onisan wa dou desu ka? How about your older brother? Ie, kyoshitsu ni ani ga imasen. No, my brother is not in the classroom. Ie ni imasu. He is at home. Maybe he's sick, so he stayed home. Notice that the word that was used changed. The person who's speaking who has the older sister and the older brother is using the humble term, ane and ani. But the person talking to this person is using the respectful term, onisan, onisan. So that's kind of how these two words get used. If you are only here for book two lessons and you don't care about the JLPT, maybe you're not ready for kanji yet, you can stop here and wait for the next lesson to come out. Those of you who are doing both the JLPT course and the book two course, we are going to do just a quick little quiz, like a little review. Because they are your first kanji, we're going to try to kind of ease you into it a little bit. So we're just gonna do a little multiple choice quiz, nice and easy, to see if you remember the meaning of the kanji and how that kanji is read in different words. So the one that is in pink is the kanji that you need to know. So first, what does this kanji mean? Do you remember? It just means one, right? One line, number one. This word means together. So how do you think the number one here is read in this word? Ichi sho, hito sho, i sho, or itsu sho? What do you think? It's this one. Isho. Isho ni together with me. Let's go do this thing. Isho. Isho together. How about this one? This one means September. September. So if you remember the lesson on numbers and months from the beginner course, that should help you. How do I say September? What does this kanji mean? What do you think? This one means month. Month. Technically it means moon, but it also means month. Moon or month. So September is which month? 
the ninth one. It's the ninth month, right? Nine months. Well, pretty easy, straightforward. So what is it? It's this one, Ku. Ku Gatsu, Ku Gatsu, September. Next one, this one means square, square or quadrilateral. How many sides does a quadrilateral have? Four. This is the kanji for four. It's shikaku, shikaku, square. This word is a little more tricky. Uh, it means turkey. Turkey is not really a word you need very often when you speak Japanese, unless you are an American that speaks Japanese and you want to like talk about Thanksgiving. That's like the only time, but it is a word that uses the kanji for seven, seven. The one in the middle, men, that means like a face or a side. So this is seven side bird. Seven side bird. That's what a turkey is. I don't know why. Maybe because, do they have seven tails? Maybe? Seven tail feathers? I don't know why they're called seven sided birds. Maybe because they're so fat. So it's like they have seven sides. I'm not sure. So that's what it means. Seven side bird. Shichi menjo. Shichi menjo turkey. <laughs> now you know. Next up, this one means six days. It can also mean the sixth day of the month. So I just gave you the answer. This kanji means six. Six and then this one means day. You'll actually learn this kanji in the next lesson. But six days or the sixth. And it is kind of a weird one. It's not the standard roku or ro, but it's mui. Mui ka. We've got six days. Okay, for this one, I want you to pick which kanji do I need to make this correct. So in the first picture here, we've got three Spider-Men, right? Which of these kanji means three? What do you think? It's not Hitori. Hitori imas. No, it's not that one. How about Sanin? Sanin imas. Does that mean three? Three people? Yes, it does. So if it's three people, if this one's three, then we know that it's not this one, which is futari. Futari imas. It's not that one. How about this one? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Fifteen puppies. Is it koinu wa? Ichi kyu hiki imas. Or koinu wa goju piki imas. Or koinu wa jugo hiki imas. What do you think? Well, the first one doesn't even make sense. This is not a number. We don't do that. <laughs> we don't put one and nine together. So it's not that one. What about goju piki? Goju piki imas. That would be 50. That's five tens. 50. We don't have 50 dogs. So it's not that one. This one, jugo, jugo hiki. This one means 15, 10 and then five, 15. And hiki is the animal counter, if you don't remember. And we did it, we are all done. Congratulations on completing your very first lesson of book two. I had planned on recording the next lesson for the JLPT course today after I got done with this one, but I have actually run out of time. I will try to record it as soon as I can. It is complete. I just have to record it and edit it and get it up. So I'll try to get it up in a couple of days, hopefully. We'll see. <laughs> Fingers crossed, I'll try my best. I do have a job outside of this, if you don't know, but I'm trying my best to get them out as fast as I can, I promise. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.